All right, let's do this. Hello, 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 and welcome. Welcome, welcome to another live stream. I am Dan, your friendly fishmonger from dansfish.com. Hope you're all doing well. We do this every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Mountain. That is 9 p.m. Eastern, if you don't know where the mountains are. And we're going to talk fish and do some fun stuff today. We have an incredible giveaway that I can't wait to tell you about. Um, in fact, yeah, yeah, we'll start with the shipping report like we always do and then go to the giveaway. Mile High Plecos, Mikey Trevor, it's great to see you, brother. I hope you're doing okay down there. Hope you're doing well. Audio is good. Okay, and with that, we'll get going. I always wait till someone tells me the audio is okay <laughs> so I don't talk for 20 minutes without you guys being able to hear me as has happened in the past what fun anyway the shipment report this one is not going to be as good this is the first week where we had some trouble so there were some delays um, and there were this is the first time I think in 2020 that there were some DOAs if I remember correctly so um, one order a whole bunch of rainbow fish and some other stuff had had a few issues and someone else the person that won the signifer rainbows or blue eyes sorry rainbow purists the um, signifers and the fricata giveaway last week um, all of them arrived alive but he said one was struggling so I'm not sure if it's going to recover yet or not so not the best news. The good news is the vast majority of the fish that were shipped out arrived alive and are doing well. Um, but this was a mistake on my part. I, I weighed the odds and I thought it would be okay to ship this week even with all the cold weather going around and things um, because they just go to Louisville, Kentucky and then they go out from there. And I didn't realize that the one thing I didn't take into account is that cold weather in like the south and the east, you know, Tennessee, Louisville, that, that kind of area, um, would take down power grids. I, I didn't think about that. I just thought, oh, there'll be, it's a little colder, but it'll put in enough heat packs and good insulation and, and they'll survive the trip. But I didn't take into account the fact that when it gets super cold in places that are not used to cold, that the demand on the power grid goes way up and that crashes power grids and so due to issues like that the UPS warehouse was quite sluggish so there were um, most of the boxes were delayed and didn't get there until today so they were in route in the cold for too long so even though I insulate really well I was actually a little bit surprised because I insulate well and put in a lot of heat packs but they must have been at least that one box that had several issues. I think it arrived at like 55 degrees, which is just way too cold. And um, that must have been somewhere in the warehouse or out on the in the parking area or loading dock or something where it was just way too cold. So I apologize to those customers. That was my error. I should have just waited. But I thought, oh, it's cold, but I can account for that. I could account for the cold, but I didn't count on power outages and stuff like that. So I'll remember this next time. There tends to be one week each year where we have some kind of problem like this. Um, and it's a different cause each time. <laughs> so each time I learn from it and I'm like, I won't repeat that, but then it's something else the next year. So hopefully this is the only one for 2021. And it wasn't nearly as bad as it could have been. Um, I think the total that I know of so far is six fish lost from the entire week's shipments and um, in one struggling. And the, the shipment where the six fish were lost, there's others struggling, I'm sure, uh, because that's way too cold, 55 degrees. So I, I told the customer, you know, keep an eye on them. Let me know in a few days if anyone else doesn't recover fully from being that cold, then I'll take care of them. But I hate having to say that. Um, I, I This is the part that I, I hate of this live stream, but I still think it's important to be transparent, tell you guys what's going on, tell you guys when there are problems because it keeps me honest and it keeps me trying hard to prevent those problems because I know each week I'm going to have to come and report to you guys. So that's why I do it. <laughs> so it keeps me from cutting corners and things like that. So anyway, that's the shipment report. Not as good as I would have thought or expected, um, but not as bad as it could have been once uh, 
I kind of realized all the problems that were going around, which, you know, Monday when I sent them out, I, I just didn't realize it would be that bad. So uh, bad call on my part. On a better note, let's switch topics. I received this today. This is really fun. This showed up in the mail. It says, February 3rd, 2021. I made it to the bottom of the chat. So here's my victory mug. I want to thank the person that sent this to me. Um, I don't know if they want to be shouted out. I, I don't ever want to like break anyone's trust. So you know who you are. Thank you so much. And if you don't mind people knowing who you are, if you would just say in the chat, that was me, um, because I just tend to err on the side of caution when it comes to people's privacy. Um, I don't think that's something that would have to be private, but I wouldn't want to out anybody. But I haven't, um, I'm not using it tonight just because I haven't yet washed it and it's probably fresh from the factory. And so I want to um, give it a wash before I drink out of it. But next week I'll be drinking out of this. And it's really nice. It's like one of those uh, vacuum insulated uh, mugs. So it's going to keep stuff really warm or really cold for a long time. So not only is it super cool what's engraven on it, but it seems like a really high quality, uh, really neat product. So thank you so much. You know who you are. I see the person in here that sent it to me. Thank you. And again, if you don't mind people knowing who you are, just say it was me and then I can thank you by name. <laughs> um, other good news is it, it looks like the import is for sure coming next week. I got some paperwork today, which kind of finalizes things. So I think we're good to go. Okay, now we know. So it was Orange Cones. He says, it's orange for a reason. Thank you, Orange Cones, for the amazing mug, the commemorative mug. You know, some people get these at graduation or the birth of their kids. I get them when I reach the bottom of the chat. <laughs> Because it's just that rare. <laughs> On February 3rd, 2021, I reached the bottom of the chat. It will now forever be remembered. Maybe I'll like build a big obelisk in the town square and engrave it. Just so that, you know, in 10,000 years when the aliens land and are wondering what we were like, they can see that and really understand humanity. <laughs> anyway, enough of that, but thank you, Orange Cones. I was tickled pink when I opened, I should say, I was tickled orange when I opened the box and saw what it was. That was pretty awesome. Um, anyway, the import looks like it is indeed going to come in. I just found that out just a little earlier today. I, I mean, I figured it would, but things look like they're official. There's actually a flight attached officially and all that stuff, so should be good to go. Um, what else is going on? Um, oh, I don't think I mentioned this. Couple, couple weeks ago, I ordered you know about twenty thousand dollars worth of forty-gallon breeder aquariums. So that was cool. Today, I ordered all the lids for those aquariums. Um, I have my order into Gemco for all the bulkheads and different bits and pieces, and for the air pump that I'll be using to power the warehouse and all that stuff. Um, just waiting on the last engineering piece. This is the electrical drawings that we need to get drawn up and stamped. So have all the permissions. That's all in the works. As soon as those electrical drawings are done, then we can put in, excuse me, the, the, the rest of the things for permitting. So we've already done some permitting for, like we have to bring in a water main, like a big eight inch water main and a sewer main onto the property uh, to handle the possible amount of flow that we might want to use. And we have to con construct a big retention pond or detention pond, I think they call them, for runoff water. And there's all these things. So uh, there's all these groundwork pieces that are already in for permit. The last little bit is this electrical piece. And then we should be still on, on um, schedule to build this fishy warehouse and, and break ground in April and go from there. So pretty excited about that. Um, on the hiring front, so part of this expansion, for those that don't know, we're expanding this into a real business. For the last couple of years, we've been testing the concept just here on my property, uh, in my basement, upstairs in the fish annex, which you know used to be my garage. <laughs> and 
now that we know that the business will work, and we have actual data that we can model out and see what the um, business looks like as we scale up, um, we're building a big warehouse to move into. And part of that expansion is we need some help. So we're gonna need some people, we're gonna need to hire some people to help us out. So we're in pretty good shape. We have um, some folks that are really, really good for the fish happiness guru, chief fish happiness officer um, position. And we are bringing one of those folks out uh, in a couple weeks. Um, to come out and work with me for a week so we get to know each other and they get to know the town get to kind of the real dirt on what it is to do this how we do things and after a week we'll say hey did we play well in the sandbox are we a good fit did we enjoy working together you know all those things and my my hope is that we can move forward with that person so we're pretty good on the uh, chief operations officer is technically what that role will be i call it chief fish happiness officer uh, kind of quality control systems efficiency things like that the part where we're still looking is someone to help us with our content creation and in taking pictures and videos and making social media content newsletters things like that just getting the word out basically our marketing effort although it's not just buying ads it's more like creating valuable content for community that's what we're doing so we're still looking for that person we've had um a couple really good people but due to family situations and all that we haven't found anyone yet who is able to actually move here and do this with us full time so if you're someone who knows about pictures and videos and likes to make those take them edit them get them all ready and knows about how to effectively use social media um, knows how to look at the data that um, of how your posts and things are working and make decisions on what should we continue, how should we strategize, all that based on that data, then we're very interested in finding that person. There is someone now who's working with us. You might have noticed some changes on the YouTube channel. Um, if you look at last week's live stream and you go to the description, you'll see this that it's is it the live stream no I think it's the fish tour the last fish tour we did you'll notice that there's this whole table of contents that shows you which fish at which time during the tour and all that so that was done by someone who's just volunteering their time to help us out um, they've also started taking the audio from our live streams and creating a podcast it's called the Dan's fish podcast and it is right now on um, I want to say Stitcher, but that's not the one. Spotify. It's up on Spotify, and we'll gradually put it out on other platforms and do other things. So we do have someone helping with that, and I want to thank this person. And you know what? Um, I'm going to have to get their permission uh, another time and, and name them by name because they're doing a ton of work, and I'm very, very grateful. So you know who you are. Thank you so much. And um, I, I just want to make sure you're okay with me telling people who you are before I do that. And I didn't ask before I went live. So I'll have to do that. But next week, if they're okay with it, I plan on saying who this is just because uh, I'm so grateful for what they're doing. It's a lot of time and a lot of expertise. It's very valuable to us. But anyway, you might see those changes on the YouTube channel um, and the podcast is going now. And they're doing some other things as well. So they're being very helpful. The issue is they're not in a place in their life at this moment where they can actually move here and take on the position full time like we need. Um, and, and they and I have talked about this and trying there might be a way that we could do some things by distance and all that but we really need someone who can be here and taking the pictures and making the videos um, just because that's such an important part of what we're doing in our plan for making this sustainable and I already know with everything on my plate just just running the business that I'm not gonna have time to do that uh, sustainably so if you're someone who is interested in that kind of thing, social media marketing, I guess you could call it, I don't know, call it value creation, I guess. Um, then reach out, dan at dancefish.com, we're still looking. Um, and yeah, we really wanna find that person before June. That's when we want everyone out here 
that's when we plan. Now, construction could change this date. I don't have any control over when <laughs> the contractor actually gets things done. But the plan for now is to get everyone out here in June and uh, move everything into the warehouse, get it set up, and, and start rocking and rolling. So if you want to be part of that, send me an email, dan at dancefish, with your cover letter and your resume. And, and just that. Uh, please follow those instructions. Cover letter and resume. That's what I need. So we're still looking for you if that's you. Okay, anyway, I guess I should have said, <laughs> I, could have, I could have said that in about 30 seconds, but anyway. It's been a journey, um, you know, trying to fill these positions and things. And there's, they're so important. It's, it's what my mind's on. They're just so important at this stage in the company to get the right people in to be leaders in the company um, and help us grow and kind of set the culture, set the tone of everything as we move forward. So we're being very picky um, and very careful but we still are looking so there you have it all right let's see here i think that's i think that's probably it so let's get to the giveaway i am very excited about this giveaway so priscilla from swiss aquatics used to be priscilla mkr but now she has a great website called swiss aquatics which is right here has created these beautiful prints this beautiful artwork and the giveaway tonight is for, she said we could give away up to four of these. So what I'm going to do is I think two winners that each get two. So we'll draw one fairly quick here before too much time goes by to kind of reward the people that were here earlier. And then we'll draw one later in the stream and each drawing will be for two prints. Now I think you can pretty much take your pick from among these, but Priscilla will have the final say on that because I don't know what her inventory is on all these and, and all that. So, um, yeah, I think this is an awesome giveaway. So if you would like to win some art from Priscilla, hashtag Swiss Aquatics in the chat will get you entered and um, we'll draw that in a bit. So hashtag S-W-I-S-S-A-Q-U-A-T-I-C-S, -S -S Swiss Aquatics. And check out her website, SwissAquatics.com. She's got other stuff there too, um, besides just the art. So I will link her website right here, and I'm sure the mods will link it as we go. In fact, they probably already have. <laughs> but Priscilla, I thought this was um, an amazing giveaway so I want to thank you very much for providing it. And I, I want to plug you a little bit because I think it's awesome. I've been drooling over this Arapaima. Okay, let me show you this. This. So Arapaima are pretty cool fish. I think they get like 12 feet long or something. Probably the biggest as in length. Um, I don't know. There might be some stingrays or something that actually get bigger because they're so wide like big pancakes but this is the longest fish that I'm aware of in freshwater um, and this is the first time I've seen a depiction of one that really got me excited and I was like man one day I'm gonna have that because look at this there's something about how she's created the depth of this and the composition of it and the focus on the front of the fish the head and eye and everything but the rest going back and you get a sense of the color so the way she did this is dynamic enough that it makes that fish just pop off the page it's the first time i've seen uh, a depiction a painting or drawing of an arapima or arapaima that uh that i was like man that's actually really cool because usually let's be honest they're cool but usually they just in a drawing or something just look like a big fish and they're so big that you kind of get the your focus the, the composition of it right if you're focusing on it your eye is kind of stuck in the middle of the fish she's done it in a way that really focuses your attention effectively and i like that about this guy too um this arowana just the way it's dynamic it's facing me it's interacting with me anyway i think she has a great knack so Oh, speaking of artists, Punchy Paints is going after me. I actually checked this time before I went live. She'll be going at 9 p.m. Mountain Time, so about half an hour after we close. So if you want um, more Fish Family banter, check out Punchy Paints. 
Wait, Swamp Thing saying, Arapima is a horror species in Florida. I didn't know that. I knew that um, there were a lot of fish in Florida that were uh, creating a problem, but I didn't know that Arapima was one of them. Hopefully they're big enough that they can be hunted out. Uh, I don't think an Arapima can hide very well. They're so darn big, but oh man, I didn't know about that. Um, let's go up here and get to questions and comments. So... <laughs> Scott Backer says, so that's why my Gemco order was delayed. <laughs> Probably the weather and COVID and all that. They've been struggling uh, for about a year now just with all the regulations and things that New Jersey came up with. Uh, every time I talk to John, he's like, I'm sorry, we're trying, but we can only have so many staffed. And yeah, they, they've run into a lot of problems. I think I think they're figuring it out, but... I think Gemco is going to be um, a little slower than normal un until until the COVID restrictions and things are gone. Now, I don't know the details of New Jersey, but every time I talk to John, he's kind of like, yeah, so-and-so was sick today, so they can't come in for two weeks because they're quarantined and blah, blah, blah. And so, yeah. Anyway, let's get to your questions and comments. If you have a question or comment for me, make it at Dan's Fish. Click my name in the option, and Dan's Fish in the option, and I'll get to you. So I'm going to start now. Michael Millieri, how's the weather in Wyoming? Also loving the new glasses. Well, thank you. The, the one thing about these, I think, is just the reflection, right? Like that bright reflection. I, I don't know how to... I haven't worn glasses in 20 years, so I have to go to the uh, eye doctor and say, hey, what can I do about the reflective surface on these? Is there some kind of thing we can put over them because I think that's probably distracting but but it's good to be able to see and not have to do this <laughs> um, the weather in Wyoming it's finally warm again we got up to about 40 degrees today which was crazy I woke up this morning and it was a toasty 20 degrees which actually felt really warm um, that's coming off of a week where oh we hit I think we hit, hit negative 20, negative 25, somewhere around there. And it never warmed up into the positive degrees. I think the high was something like negative 10, negative 5, something like that. And so if you're going seven, eight days in a row and it's negative 20 to negative 5 and never gets warmer, it starts feeling awful cold. <laughs> so it was nice woke up to a crisp 20 degrees this morning and we got a ton of snow i've been i basically spent the afternoon digging out it's been quite snowy but warm enough that it's fun again i know 20 degrees it's warm what it is when it was negative 20. it's you know that's quite a difference it's one thing i love the warehouse update i'd be a bad fishmonger but a great fish room builder it's my favorite part of the hobby sounds like fun well come on over you can help and I'll order you a pizza. <laughs> That's worth it, right? Pizza slices, a trip to Wyoming to help. <laughs> um, I, I'm lucky, I've got a brother who's gonna come help. Uh, my dad might be able to come out and help. There's some local folks that'll help. So we'll be able to knock this out. I, I ordered some tools too. I ordered, um, I'm gonna need a, a couple saws and things. So I got a miter saw and I'll need to order something else, probably a table saw with a dado blade set to um, cut all the notches in the vertical stands for the fish room, for the racks, for the warehouse, I mean for the racks. Normally, I just do it in my friend's shop, but his shop is too small and there's so much to build that I, I can't do this build in his shop. So one of my investors has a big storage warehouse that we've kind of cleared out a big section of it so I can build it up there. So um, I have a place to build it here, getting the tools together. And when my brother comes over in April, we'll start building and that should get us uh, all kind of built and up and running. So as soon as the warehouse can have our occupancy, as soon as we can take occupancy, we should be ready to just move the racks in and get going. That's the that's the plan. And it is fun. I've built a few fish rooms in the past, and I have a good time with it. Danny Weshi, I just picked... Wait, hang on. I said Michael Meliere, right? I know it's not Meliere. I, I, I've been saying that wrong. I found out this week it's actually Melier. So, sorry, Michael, 
force of habit. Danny Witchy, I just picked up some cool rare mollies that a local guy's been line breeding for over 40 years. Know anything about Senna? Don't know if that's how that's spelled, spelled molly. I don't. I don't. Let's see if that's how it's spelled. John Senna? <laughs> Molly Senate? No, it's. I'm gonna. I'd have to do a more in depth search. I don't, but that's pretty cool when you can find an old timer that's been keeping something in their basement going for decades and, and get it out again. There's several lines of fish that have been saved that way guppy lines and certain wild type lie bearers and things. So I'm glad you got them. Like, I wonder what they look like now. Rockford Fish Keeping, what are the silver and black fish behind you? Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, but for those that don't know, hang on, let me turn my notifications off of my phone. That's annoying. For those that don't know, these are freshwater archer fish. So the Burmese clouded archer fish or the leopard archer fish, they're, they're called different things. But the scientific name is Toxotos. I think that's how you say that. Uh, Blythea is the species. Toxotis. Oh, now I got to see. Toxotis, yeah, Toxotis blythei. Bathyphila, when you said the import is coming next week, is that the Indonesia or Nigeria order? That's the Indonesia order. So I heard back from Nigeria this week. Um, they're having an issue, which is they cannot find a flight to my uh, to the airport in Dallas, Texas, where I have someone who can an agent that can receive them, change the water, put in a heat pack, and send them to me. Um, and so I have another gentleman in Florida that I'm talking to, to see, he owns a fish farm in Florida. He's a good friend of mine. Um, and we're trying to see if we can send them to his airport and he could do that for me. Um, it, it'll be a few weeks though before he could get set up and get that happening. Cause he's got to clear it through fish and wildlife make sure that so it's it's not a port of entry the tampa florida airport is not a designated port of entry but they are still staffed there with fish and wildlife and customs so what that means is you can make it work out if they're willing to play ball so you can go and say hey this is what i want to do and let me pay the extra fee and get an extra permit and get this all arranged with you it's a little more um there's it, it's a little more difficult than doing a, a standard designated port of entry but we might be able to work it out so that's the next step but what that means is it's going to be at least six weeks before nigeria comes because that's a process and i could just ship them to myself and import them on my own import license, but it's so cold at the Denver airport that I don't want to bring them directly in there this time of year. They'll just be too cold. The, the heat, they don't use heat packs and the, the liners are so, so thin that they won't do well in my local airport. Swamp Thing, why would anyone not want to live in Sheridan? I agree, says the guy from Florida. <laughs> it is cold, but it's a beautiful, picturesque place up in the mountains. Just, well, right at the base of the mountains, really. I, I love it here. I think it's a great place. And it's been a wonderful, wonderful place to raise kids. So we're glad we moved. Southern California is great, but trying to raise kids and get them a good education in the Los Angeles school district uh, is a bit of a challenge <laughs> for where we were. It, yeah, it didn't work out well for us. Dance Fish, there's no seashore in Wyoming, no beach, no wife. Paul, there's absolutely a seashore in Wyoming. Now, it's about 100 million years old, but it's there. You just have to drive up in the mountains and you can find all kinds of seashells up there. Absolutely. There's so many seashells. <laughs> there is a seashore. Just it's far from the ocean. <laughs> Dragon layer. They found a six foot dead one in a river in Florida in Arapaima. Oh, I did not realize that had happened. Jeez. Man, I'm afraid for Florida. I just, I just wonder if it's too late for a lot of those habitats. I mean, 
Arapaima, I think, is probably less problematic than a lot of them, just because, again, it's so darn big. Like, I, th I think you could hunt it to extinction. But, in fact, I think there was quite a while where it was getting pretty scarce in its natural habitat due to overfishing and hunting. But there are so many other species that are just taking over that state. I, I just worry about it. Peeps lost sheep. Sturgeon can reach over 20 feet long. Oh, that's true. Duh. Why didn't I think of that? You're absolutely right. Maybe it's just the biggest one in the Amazon system. Yeah, it's not. Yes. Nah, yeah. Allegianaeus. I have heard about glass shortages throughout the industry. Are all the LFS have been complaining. Who's manufacturing your tanks? So I talked to the manufacturer and I'm giving them a long window. The tanks won't arrive until mm, like the first week of May. So they have a few months to get all ready and they said, yeah, with that time frame we could do it. They actually said they could have it by April, but I told them May because I wouldn't have any worth for, to, to store them in April. So, um, and who's manufacturing? Uh, I think it's Aquion is who I'm going with. Now I've checked out some, I like to support the little guys too. I know some smaller shops that build aquariums in Los Angeles. Um, and I did reach out to them, but the costs were so vastly different. I had to go with Aquion to make it affordable. Bunny Viper, what is your favorite fish? Fundalo Panchex Garden Rye. Great little killifish that I love and have loved for almost 30 years. So that's my favorite. T-Shot, hey Dan, Salt and Pleco's still doing good. Boom, thanks again for the great business. Can't wait to order again. Hey, I'm glad he's doing good for you. They're so beautiful. Those Salt and Plecos really are a cool little Pleco. Heather Body Smith, took your advice from last week and did not get the pitcher catfish, Pictus, I think you meant, but got yesterday a Farawella named Ziggy. So cool, Ziggy? As in Ziggy Stardust or as in Ziggy the comic? They're both good choices. That's, I'm, I'm glad they're doing well for you, and I'm glad you like it. Speaking of Farawellas, Orange Cones is breeding some Farawellas. Orange Cones, I saw your picture. I think that's pretty cool. And they look like they're uh, fertile and developing and everything, the egg. So congratulations. Orange Cones says, anti-glare spray works well. For glasses, cool. I'll have to look into that. Um, I'll have to see what that is. Hopefully it doesn't come off every time I wipe my glasses, because... That's my new thing. Like, I forgot about that. I'm, like, forever having to clean them. <laughs> Rockford Fishkeeping. Take some steel wool to the glasses. It won't reflect anymore. <laughs> Touche, Rockford. Frankie Fins. I'm looking to stock up a 20 high. What are my options? Looking to buy from you. Almost anything I have would be an option. There's a few exceptions, like I have some Severums right now, some Spotted Severums and some Red Shoulder Severums, and the Mouth Brooding Severums are awesome. If anyone's looking for Mouth Brooding Severums, I have two, they're doing great, really neat species. Those get too big. Um, Roseline Barbs might get a little big for a tank that size, so there's a few exceptions, but almost everything else I have would do well for you. So what would be helpful, Frankie, since there's so many options, is if you would send me a list, um, you can post it here in the chat or send me an email, dan at dancefish.com, and pick, say, your top five, five, seven, something like that, but say, these are the ones I really like, and then I can say, oh yeah, those will all do fine together in a 20, or, well, four of the five will do well, but this one's a little tricky or a little aggressive or something like that, but almost all the fish I have are small and peaceful, so they'll do great. Now, a lot of the rainbow fish species I have will outgrow a 20 high as well. Um, so I guess there are a few that won't, but, but most I think would do fine for you. Brian Maramba. Hey, Dance Fish, how do I get my rainbow shiners to start breeding? How old do they need to be? Are they egg scatters? They are egg scatters, absolutely. Um, they need to go through a cold period and then be warmed up. So if you can, I would take them down to about, oh, I don't know, 45 degrees or so leave them there for a couple months and then gradually bring them up um, and they will once they hit about 65 degrees or around there 
they'll color up and start breeding for you. They need to be, I would say, a year old before they'll breed. That's my guess. Two, two and a half inches, something like that. Um, basically adults. And um, sorry, my lips get dry in the winter. All the, all the furnaces are on all the time. Dries out the air really bad. The best way I think to do it, well, there's a couple ways to do it. The most convenient way for me was to put them in a bare bottom tank, um, have quite a bit of flow in the tank. They really like that. Put a plastic container, like a little plastic shoe box, a little storage box, right? No lid, just that. And about, I don't know, two inches of marbles in it across the bottom. And put that in the corner. Um, not in the corner. Put that in the middle with the, the flow going over it, but not directly into it because that'll blow the eggs out. Kind of going over it and leaving a few inches above it clear, right? And if you have one, get a good size rock and put it in front of that container and have the flow hit that and go over it. And what they'll do is they'll go behind that rock, or if you don't have one, they'll go into the container be behind the side wall of the container towards the front where the flow is hitting it. And they'll go in there and they'll start spawning. They'll lay their eggs in those marbles. And the reason I like them in that little plastic shoe box is because then I can just take the shoe box out with all the eggs and move them to a rearing tank and it's super easy. Um, other folks will cover the entire bottom of the aquarium with marbles or uh, kind of large pea gravel, something like that. If you, you know, enough of a layer that the eggs will get down and, and are less likely to get eaten. And that works too, but it's harder to keep the tank clean. When you go to remove the eggs, you have to siphon the entire bottom of the tank to get them out. Um, so I, I like doing a little plastic thing. Now, when they hatch, they're going to be absolutely tiny, 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 tiny. So have Infusoria or Paramecium or Rotifers or something like that, green water, something going for them. Um, and then you raise them basically like Tetra or Danio fry. So, yes, they, they can, I hope they go for you. Man, I can't wait for you to see them all colored up. They are just, they literally blow minds. They're out of this world when they color up to spawn. Scott D, 70, I'm sorry, 37, I was going to say 73. My mind switched it. 37 gallon with under gravel and hang on back filters. Planted tank with one molly. Problem is green water. Cut the LED light back five hours a day. Did large water change. Green water keeps coming back within a few days. Ideas. So what works for me for green water is I just turn off the light 24 seven. Now I don't like darken the tank or put a towel over it, but in this fish room, like say that tank right there had green water. Um, that tank right there. <laughs> This middle tank on the top, jeez, this one, um, or any of the others. You can see it's not totally dark, right? There's ambient light and stuff, but I would just turn the light off on that tank. It could take a week or two, and um, usually that makes it go away. Now, green water is free-floating algae that's just eating a bunch of nutrients that are um, free in the tank that your plants and things aren't going to be able to utilize. So it's it's from an imbalance. I'm not a planted tank guy, so I haven't done a ton of research in it. But if you look at, say, Aquarium Co-op's channel, there's a lot of videos there about specifically algae. And Corey does a good job of talking about balance and nutrients and how if there's an imbalance of nutrients, you'll get an algae bloom. Um, because they're taking advantage of that imbalance. So I would refer you to that channel for a more in-depth video. But basically how I deal with it is I turn the light off on that aquarium and it takes a week or two, goes away. Now keep in mind, I'm changing like 30% of the water every day. So that's a factor. And I just feed a lot less and it goes away. And as long as I don't, don't like start feeding a ton as soon as it start as soon as it's gone then um, it tends to stay away for me if it's gone and then I start feeding like normal and does which is overfeeding that's probably why we're getting some algae then uh, then it tends to come back pretty quick 
So it's an imbalance of some type, Scott, and I refer you to uh, Aquarium Co-op to check out their videos, just because Corey does such a good, clear job of talking about that. Miss <laughs> Mismatch Socks <laughs> on the warehouse. Do you have backup plans for like loss of power for days at a time or below freezing weather? Curious how that will work as a business. So yeah, there is um, the electrician is putting in basically a uh, a plug on the building and I'll get a generator and if the power goes out I can just take the generator plug it in and we're good to go so yep just backup generator is how that will work now it's definitely gonna be below freezing like for months at a time that's that's not a concern this thing's gonna have um, well it would be a concern if the power went out and the generator went out then we'd be in trouble but we have uh, five to six inches of spray insulation on all the walls and the ceiling of this thing. It's gonna be pretty warm in there. So even though it'll be negative 30 outside, inside that building, it'll be like a tropical rainforest. Frankie Finn's 20 high with planted. Um, I think I already, oh yeah, already, already answered that. Ollie Fish Guy. I almost said oily. <laughs> Sorry. Ollie Fish Guy. This is Esh Thrust the. <laughs> got a new name. Oh, good. I can say it. Woo! <laughs> and a new account. Hello from Olympia, Washington. Sorry I'm late, but wasn't going to miss your stream. We've got a lot of snow this last weekend. Almost two feet. Woo! Getting the YO vibe. Hey, you're welcome. Uh, I'm glad you took some of it from us because we've got plenty, man. We've got so, so much. Ollie Fish Guy, formerly S. Shrestha. Man, just when I was getting to be able to say that. <laughs> Bill Coleman, here in Nebraska, our first positive temps were today, it reached 15. Yes, we did have a low at negative 33, and yes, it does feel nice. Oh, yeah, when it gets up to 15 degrees after a week of negative 30, it feels toasty. Like I was out there in a light sweatshirt today, <laughs> shoveling snow. Danny Weshi, he said, a Cena Molly. Yeah, I'm just not sure what a Cena Molly is, Danny. Dragon Layer, I have Rio Otapa sword tails. Cool. Any any location specific sword tails are pretty neat. And I like the Rio Otapas a lot. Mitchell Broom, the cost of lumber is pretty crazy now. You might get backed up waiting for enough if you don't get a pre order in very early for your racks. Yeah, it is nuts. Um, one reason I'm waiting for April is I'm, I've, I've looked at some projections for lumber prices and I'm hopeful based on that that they might dip a little bit because right now paying almost $9 per 2x4 when before all this happened, I could pay $2 and change. Ugh. Ugh. But then I hear it. So that's the cash 22, right? Do I wait in the chance it might drop a bit? Of course it could go up, but the trends look like, the projections look like, and I'm not an expert on the industry, but from what I've looked at, it looks to me like it might be worth waiting a bit for them to drop. Um, versus yeah, but now you can't get lumber. So it's a it's a six one way half dozen the other catch twenty two situation. <laughs> so, but but yeah, I hear you, man. I I know. I'm not sure. There's so many. Like I'm not sure how to make a decision like that. That that's a tough one. Bill Coleman. Oh, already did that one. Oh, there we are. Hang on, scrolling down. HC Aqua is here. Hey, HC. Good to see you, Jesse. Glad you could join us. John, Kim, Dan, have you used, tested, or had success with anaerobic filter media? No, um, I've never tried that. I, well, I guess that's not true. I used to work in a pet store, and they had saltwater fish, and we had, you know, big old pieces of live rock and stuff like that to, that would, I would assume, have created some anaerobic areas. But, no, I don't. I don't think this sand is big, is deep enough to have much in the way of anaerobic, especially with all the plants and the catfish always burrowing down in it and stuff. So, nope, I've never done like plenums or anoxic or anaerobic or anything like that. Um, just, I've never had the need to do it. I guess the standard ways of 
keeping fish have always worked well enough for me that I I didn't worry about looking for something else. So um, I think we should do the first giveaway. So this is for two pieces of art from Priscilla um, at Swiss Aquatics. This is Priscilla's website. These are the art prints that she has done. Well, she's done more, but that um, are currently available, it looks like. Really cool stuff. So I'm about to draw someone, and this person will win two prints from Priscilla. And the winner is Justin Powers. Justin Powers, thanks for being here. Thanks for being a sub since oh, over a year now. Awesome. And uh, you have won. So, Justin, if you would let us know you're here, you've got a, about a minute and a half to say, hey, I'm here. And um, we'll get you hooked up with your winnings. Yay, I'm here. <laughs> Perfect. Justin, congrats on winning. Send me an email, dan at dansfish.com. And let me know, hey, I'm Justin Powers. And I won a couple prints. And I'll get you in touch with Priscilla. And she'll get those out to you. Thanks again to Priscilla um, from Swiss aquatics for providing the artwork for tonight for the giveaway i think that's pretty awesome cheers lady and we'll draw two more a little later so priscilla's giving away a total of four i know in the description it said two because that's what i thought but she's like no i'll do four so um we doubled it so we've got a couple more art prints to give away later um in the live stream so just wrapping up John John Kim's question. Sorry I couldn't help you. If there's anyone else here that has tried using anaerobic filter media, would you chime in and let John know? Share your experience. Skippers Aquariums, to ask a question, make sure you type at Dan's Fish so it highlights for him. That would be most helpful. All these little orange boxes are what I'm looking for. And that's what happens when you do what Skippers Aquariums says there and make it directed at symbol dance fish lunatic fringe <laughs> cheery ltd small biological organisms are a lot more difficult to control it's part of the reason why animals are bred in their own natural habitats for reintroduction uh for waterways waterways and parasites can vary yeah yes i mean it's easier to hunt and eliminate a large top tier predator like an arapaima because there'll be less of them because they're a top tier predator and they're so big um then i don't know a whole bunch of tiny little what's one i don't know jewel cichlids good luck with that t fish is this no longer t shot are we now t fish any good breweries in sheridan absolutely the Black Tooth Brewery has won so many awards, very consistent, a lot of variety. And Luminous Brewery is, and there's a few more too. Now that being said, I'm not a big drinker um, because I like to be efficient and working kind of at the top of my game. And I'm such a lightweight that even if I have a beer, it takes me a couple days to recover. I just feel sluggish for a while. But if any of you guys like breweries we've got i think four in town right now that are all pretty darn good um and there's a brewer's club so i have a lot of friends that brew in their closets right in their basements and stuff so there's a brewer's club and and, and other options like that if you're into like artisan craft brew ollie fish no wonders i can't find any breeders I can't remember what we were talking about when you left that comment, Ollie. Sorry. <laughs> Kyle's Aquarium Metrics. It's my fault. I'm so far behind. Have you queued up Indonesia, etc.? Order six months in advance to get ready for your 400-ish tanks in the new warehouse. I bet suppliers are just as excited as we are. So, Kyle's, I haven't. I thought about that, but here's the issue. Before I place, before I fill all those tanks, I have to make sure that the system is up and running and everything's stable and test it and make sure it's doing what I thought it would do. And so I need to get it up and running. I need to put a few fish out in it, make sure they're okay, and that it's all going as planned before I place a large order. The last thing I wanna do <laughs> is place a big order, have it arrive and realize, oops, the system was not calibrated properly or there's an issue or something like that, right? 
and then have a massive, massive problem. So I thought about that. I feel you. But I think the move is get it up and like when you set up a new tank, right? You get it set up, you make sure it's stable, you make sure that the, the heater's steady for a couple days, everything's going okay, and then you put some fish in it so it's stable. So, uh, yeah, that's what I have to do. But man, I wish I could. I wish this warehouse was done like last year. <laughs> I'm so ready. <laughs> I'm so ready. Paul Soltero, the snow won't be melting by early. <laughs> the snow won't be melted by early April. I hear you. <laughs> so that is a factor. Now, I think it will be. It's it's warmed up. It was 40 degrees today. We actually had a, quite a bit of melt off today. Uh, that's why I had to start clearing the snow because if you wait too long and it turns into this heavy slush for those of you that don't live in snow areas. You don't want to wait for it to like freeze and thaw and freeze and thaw and freeze and thaw before you remove it. You have to do it before that happens or it's a big mess. But it, it's already starting to melt and we're going to be above freezing as a high at least for at least the next 10 days or so. So I think we'll be good. Candy and Kayla's Aquatics, thank you so much. Candy is listing my email and Kayla's Aquatics is saying I was in the right place in time and I'm getting some super rare L236 Plecos. No common name. Woo, congrats, Bob. Let's look at these suckers. L236. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That is a beautiful zebra type Pleco. Look at that thing. I like the variation in the patterns. That's pretty cool. How big does this buddy get? 4.7 inches. Nice, small little pleco. Oh, that's awesome. Looks like there's some variations from white to yellow to beige. I like fish like that that have a... Oh, look at that one. That have a whole lot of variation in them. Because they're endlessly entertaining, right? You never get sick of them. Congrats, Bob. That's pretty awesome. And while I'm talking to Bob and Candy, etc., thank you to my mods for being here, for doing what you do every week, showing up and volunteering your time and your expertise to make this stream work. Cheers. I very much appreciate you. Hang on, I see people uh, talking to Zen. Looks like there was an issue. What's going on, Zen? Power outage? Yeah, to Zen and anyone else that's going through that, I, I'm wishing the best for you. If you're dealing with power outages and losing fish and all that, I with all this crazy weather, I feel for you. And uh, we're all with you and we're sorry. We hope it gets better soon. Kelly Foreman throwing down $4.99. Kelly, thank you so much. Hey at Dance Fish, the Sicyopterus Lagocephalus gobies I bought are doing great. Any tips on how to bring them into breeding dress? Thanks. I don't know, uh, Kelly. The honest truth is this is my first time ever with this species of goby. And um, they're brand new to me. And there's not a lot of literature available on them. So I'm not sure. My guess would be to try to simulate a rainy season, um, kind of like you do with Corridor's catfish and others where for a while you do less water changes. I'm not saying you make the tank dangerous or anything, but less water changes. Maybe it's a little warmer. And then you do start doing large frequent water changes and uh, lowering the temperature a few degrees ideally when there's a low pressure front coming in. So that would be my guess. But they're new enough to me that I don't know. In fact, I'm not even positive what the species is. The, um, the supplier sold them as Lagocephalus. And I had a customer reach out, I think this week, and got some and was like looking and thinks that they're a very similar species that comes from the same creek as Lagocephalus, called Sicyopterus um, ocellaris, I believe. The issue is there's no like 
pictures or information about it. So we were just looking at the um, scientific description of them, the, the paper where they're actually described, and we noticed something in that. And this is, this is just recently where the big thing is the Ocellaris has three little lobes in the lip. And Lagocephalus, from what I understand from the description, does not. So, um, got a picture of them up close on the lips, and indeed we saw three little um, divots, if you will, in the upper lip. So, the Cichiopteris Lagocephalus might actually be, is it Ocellaris or Ocellatus? Let me look here. Cichiopteris Ocellaris. Now again, not quite sure, because we're just going off a written description, but this fish, which I would show you pictures, but there aren't any. Like, this is a preserved specimen, but when they're preserved, they lose all their color and all that. Um, I can't find, wait, is this one? No, yeah, that doesn't show us much. I can't find a good picture to compare things with, but that dark spot in the dorsal fin, along with that, those three lobes in the upper lip, have me thinking, Kelly, that they might actually be Cichiopteris um, ocellaris, just, just as an F, FYI. Now, again, these gobies are so hard to identify, and I'm by no means the goby expert, so I'm not certain of that, but um, it's looking like that is a possibility. And I'm not certain that I understood the description right, if it was saying that those three lobes on the lip in combination with a couple other characteristics make it ocellaris, or if the three lobes on the lip itself, the way it was written, it wasn't clear, make it ocellaris. So I'm still trying to figure that out. Lunatic Fringe, you could try tinted shade cover slips on your glasses. It will cut down some of the reflection. Will they look like uh, sunglasses though? I don't want to like hide my eyes. When I think of tint, um, so I think I'll start with that. What, what did they say? There was some kind of spray, anti-reflection spray. I'm going to try that first. I mean, I'd rather go with a little glare than actually dark on the eyes. But I appreciate the suggestion. Thank you. Orange cones. 33 of the Farwella eggs are fertile. I sent you a short video by email that shows some swimming around in the eggs. Cool. They're kicking. <laughs> Super excited, and Daddy is constantly tending them. That's pretty cool. Good for you. Or you could lose your, you move your light source. Yeah, I've tried moving the lights. Um, it's more, it's less about the light and more about the fact that I have computer screens right in front of me, <laughs> and so they're literally reflecting this way. So. Total Tropicals TV. Hey Dan, did you see the link I left for you? with Melanotania Uchi Creek in the wild, left it on your Uchi Creek vid page. Oh, no, I didn't. I will check that out. Thanks, Total Tropicals. What a cool fish that is. I love the red stripes on them. And I don't think the pictures or videos, well, with so many fish, um, don't do them justice, but they get bright red lines on them. Uchi Creek vid. I'll check that out, thanks. In their natural habitat, that's pretty cool. Thanks, Terry. Or Total. Thanks, Total Tropicals. Appreciate it. So I got you confused with Terry Tropicals for a second there. <laughs> the Midnight Lobster. I just love that username. <laughs> Rockford Fishkeeping. It will be like walking into a rainforest. Your door time should be a monkey screeching to give you the full effect. Yeah, big howler monkey. <laughs> okay, we're about to jump. Sorry. Boom. There it goes got to the point where I can anticipate it. I see it like kind of freezing up and I'm like, yep, here it goes. For those that are just joining us, we'll be doing a, another giveaway a little later tonight. We, we did one a few minutes ago for some art from Swiss Aquatics, our very own Priscilla. This is some of her work and she will, the next winner will get two of these. So Pretty cool stuff, and thanks again to Priscilla at SwissAquatics.com for providing the art for the giveaway tonight. I think that's a pretty cool one. 
200 folks here. Oh, of course, as soon as I said it, it dropped to 197. Thanks for being here, everybody. Appreciate you spending your Wednesday evening with us. Okay. Hey, Bentley's here. What's up, Bentley? Good to see you, bro. I tried to say bro. It came out like bro. <laughs> Good to see you, bro. <laughs> it's like, meh. <laughs> Please only type hashtag Swiss Aquatics once. Yes, so to enter the uh, giveaway, you only have to enter once, guys. It does not do any good to enter multiple times. The uh, bot that we have running the giveaway doesn't care if you enter once or 500 times. It just enters you into the drawing one time. So, so he's up there. Whoa, boy. Sander Martin. Lumber prices are ridiculous. Yep. Find a run a family-run lumber mill. They're so much cheaper. You know what? Actually, I have a friend that has a lumber mill. I think a 2x4 would come out true 2x4. I don't think it'd be planed down at the mill, but it's worth checking. I hadn't thought of that. Cubby Shack. Hey, Dan, can you recommend a carnivore that can live in a 20 long that would handle guppy coals? Um, yeah, I, I think that it, one of the predatory puffers would be fine. The sit and wait ambush puffers. The dragon puffers don't get very big. They don't, they're not super active they kind of sit around and they'll explore and things but they don't need a bunch of fast swimming space or anything like that so i think that a uh, a dragon puffer and a 20 long might be an option for that um you could try the murder guppy um what is that predator live bear uh, pike live bear blah there it is Balone six, Belizeness. Let me uh, get you a picture of this. These guys. This is basically a big guppy that eats guppies. So these guys, big live bearing pike that specialized to eat fish. And you know, I'd have to do some research. I've never kept these. So let's get that out of the way. <laughs> I've never kept these, so I don't know for sure. If they get too big or not, let's see here. Does anyone know how big they get? The library and pike? Yeah, I'm just not sure how big they get. So I'm thinking that they could do fine, though. I'm guessing about four inches. Bunny Viper. Fundalo. Who would you please spell that? Thank you. Sure. Sure. <laughs> For you. Fundalo Panchax. <laughs> Gardener Eye. So, here you go. Genus is Fundalopanchax. Species, Gardener Eye. It's a killifish. They're beautiful. They're small, maybe about two inches on a bigger species. They're very hardy. They're very prolific and easy to breed. And just a great little fish. So, first egg lane fish that I ever bred and raised with any consistent success so they're they're just nostalgic to me I just like them a lot the one thing about them is they jump so if you get them have a tight lid on your tank and I would tell you the common name but killifish most killifish don't have any reliable common name at all so uh, I wasn't trying to just say a funky scientific name they literally don't have a common name that is widely recognized like cherry barb right that's a common name but we all know what that is killy like a, a gardener eye it could be called garden rice killy could be steel blue killy it could be I, I've seen like 10 different names for them so the only way I know of to talk about them is with their scientific name bird garden says aquatic convention I don't know what that means exactly, but um, maybe there's a convention that Bird Garden is wanting us to know about. Oh, there is a really cool talk um, that will be, I wanted to mention this. I think it's going to be on YouTube. Is it the um, GSAS meeting?
there's going to be a talk by, I think it's Mike Helwig on Betas, isn't it? Oh, Art Luderman's doing one? Okay, this is good too. Art Luderman talking about Killifish on March 9th. That's pretty cool. And there'll be a live stream March 9th at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Totally worth checking out. I don't know Art well, but he's an acquaintance from the Killifish days. And then what was the other one? Mike Helwig will be doing a stream. Is it with a different club? On wild type bettas. So this is pretty cool. Let me see if I can find it. Mike Hell. Uh, bettas? Does anyone else know about this? Um, shoot, I can't find it. I just saw a little teaser for it the other day, but if anyone else knows about it, would you post it or, or let me know where I can find it and we can post it? Because that's going to be awesome. It's going to be tomorrow. It's going to be a, a live stream on YouTube, and I just can't remember which club it's with. But it's totally going to be worth it. Mike's an awesome guy, and wild bettas are awesome fish. So, awesomeness squared. Cheshire Cat, did you get fish that seem to have real poor immune systems? What do you do that for? I have a betta that I took from someone that is really susceptible to illness and takes forever to heal. If you're asking if I would ever purposely get fish that have bad immune systems, uh, no, absolutely not. You got a fish from someone. I mean, there are some fish that I don't know if it's because they have a like they're super inbred and have a poor immune system, or just because they have some latent thing in them so when they leave the fish farm or whatever they think everything's fine but through the stress of shipping and import and everything that latent thing becomes a big problem takes purchase in the fish and kind of takes over while the fish is stressed and its immune system drops but if your question is actually what I think it is like do you purposely get in fish with bad immune systems um, <laughs> no <laughs> the answer is no never I'm not sure I understand the question correctly, though. The Zen Ginger. Oh, thanks, Dan's Fish. I can deal with the power being out for days. We have a generator now, but not enough power to keep all 22 of the fish tanks warm all over the house. So lost some fish. Yeah, I hear you. Sorry about that. It's no fun. Supreme Gecko. By the way, thank you for getting back to me via email. You're welcome. And um, I'll get back to you again. The issue is um, I want Jonathan to be on the call with me and he's in Texas and they're battling uh, no electricity and freezing temperatures and all kinds of issues right now so I'm just waiting till he gets power back and everything so I can schedule uh, something with you Supreme Gecko but you're welcome looking forward to talking to you all right chat jumped so let me look again and see if I can find, here we are. Nope, already got that one. It's funny, it jumps, but it doesn't jump so much that you don't have to scroll through some of the old ones. <laughs> Chaos Aquatics, in case you don't know, Lunatic Fringe is Chewy. Yeah, gotcha, Chewy LTD, yep. Crown tail half moon at Priscilla MK. If you're lurking, those arts are spectacular. Yep, Priscilla does a good job. Ollie Fish Guy. That gray shed glass. This was cool looking. I was talking about the 40 breeder. No wonder you cleaned us out. Hang on. Ollie Fish Guy. That gray shed glasses was cool looking. You talking about the sunglasses I had last week? Maybe. I was talking about the 40 breeder. No wonder you cleaned us out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you're, if you're trying to get a 40 breeder, it could be a while. I've kind of cornered the market. Supreme Gecko, any favorite epistogramma? Whichever one I'm looking at at the moment, I, I like them all. Um, my tastes, I guess, tend to be towards the more wild forms. Um, I like like a double or triple flash or double red or, you know, any of that stuff of cockatoides or agazizia or whatever. But... Um, so, 
they're all awesome, but if I had my druthers and I had a choice, I'd probably pick a wild type one over a uh, strain developed in captivity, a color form developed in captivity. That being said, though, I've seen Candy Overhaul's um, tanks, and she has some amazing-looking cockatoides in her tanks. They're absolutely stunning. They are cockatoides, right? Not Agazizii? Yeah, I, I think I'm right on that. Brian Klimazewski, will you be getting some Orange Venezuelan and Melanotania Colossiensis? So I already got the Orange Venezuelanus in, um, and they should be listed this weekend. They should be out of quarantine this weekend. They're doing great. They're rock solid. So I got some Pygmaeus and some Venezuelanus in uh, a couple weeks ago, and they've just been getting through quarantine, doing great. So, yep. Now, Colossiensis, I did order more, and we'll see. That's a fish that uh, just because I order doesn't mean I'll get because there's not a lot of them, but I'm trying. By the way, you have great taste, Brian. Those are two beautiful fish. Mitchell Broom, Mike is doing it via Massey. Thank you. So let me find that so I can link it. Massey, Mike, Helwig. Okay. <laughs> Apparently, Massey is um, a music guy. So, Massey Fish? I'm, I'm subscribed to that channel, so I think it would pop up. Massey Channel? Jeez. There it is. All right. Let me see, is it here where I could link it yet? It's not here where I could link it yet, but here's the channel. I'll link that for you. What is it, Missouri Aquarium Society, Massey? And Mike Helwood is an awesome dude. Like a few years ago, um, I'm dating myself, but he and Ted Judy has had this breeding competition that was done in Tropical Fish Hobbyist magazine, and it was the coolest thing that magazine ever did. <laughs> it was really cool, where the goal was for both of them to, they were trying to breed more different species of fish than the other, and win, like, and they, they bred just so many different species of fish and documented it and talked about it. It was really fun. But that's kind of how I got to know Mike Helwig. And then I bought his book on culturing live food. And that's been super useful to me. So I am a fan of Mike Helwig. And I think he's just a fun guy. Wow, that's funny. It jumped again and let me go up twice as long, twice as high as it did before. So that's weird. All right. Okay, I'm looking, looking. Almost there. Okay, got to Brian. Got to Mitchell Broom and Audrey Sampson. It's the Massey Aquarium Club that's doing Yes, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Spring Deco, no worries when you are ready. Yep, we'll be, we'll be getting in touch with you. Cost of generators, says Lunatic Fringe. Can get expensive with the size of the fish room. I'm familiar with that from the aspect of doing live outdoor concerts. Sure, 220 generators are expensive. Yes, absolutely. It's going to be a cost, but I think it's kind of necessary. And we'll be strategic about it. We don't have to keep everything going. We just have to keep the life support systems going. So, um, but yeah, I hear you. Kyle's Aquarimetrics. Have you ever seen a fish's scales develop some patches of black? Yes. I have a pseudomugil Ivan Stafi that has this starting to happen just under the dorsal fin and halfway down the body. So I have seen it on, on many, many different species of fish. I've seen tiny little black flecks, which might have been velvet. I've seen large black splotches that I have no idea what they were. Um, sometimes they come and go and everything's fine. Sometimes they come and they stay and the fish eventually dies. Um, all kinds of it. So. I'm sorry it's happening. Um, don't know what it could be though, because that can be caused by lots of different things. And I'm the veterinarian. All I can say is I hope that the fish recovers. Hopefully it's just a pigment thing and not an infection thing. But I, I'd have no way of knowing and I, without going to, like taking the fish to an aquatic veterinarian, I'm not sure how to know that. If anyone here has any knowledge about that, please let Kyle's Aquarium Metrics know. However, 
Before you do, please keep in mind that we're trying to keep the information um, accurate enough that it's actually actionable. So if it's something you've experienced directly, and then please talk about it. But if it's just something that you heard about once or whatever and is just secondhand and part of the myth and lore of the hobby, let's try to avoid those answers and give substantive answers based on experience or detailed research. Basically, we're trying to make a stream where people get information that they can be confident is usable versus um, just off the cuff you know, responses that might be inaccurate and lead people astray. Sam McMichael, Michael Helwig, Massai, Missouri Aquarium, live on YouTube, will be in 22 hours, and Sam has a countdown. <laughs> That's cool, Sam. Cheshire Cat, no, not purposely. Oh, okay, in general, sure. I'm sure it happens. I've had a beta for 1.5 years, got sick from someone who couldn't get it healthy, and I've had the same problem. It's always sick. I've tried so much. Yeah, um, sure. Yeah. I, there's plenty of times when I get an import and have been dismayed by the state of the fish. Absolutely. It's one of the things I hate most about the hobby. And it's, well, the industry, I should say, because it's the industry side of it, generally. And um, it's one of the reasons I'm launching the business, because I'm trying to prevent that from happening. And I'm trying to get suppliers lined up that are responsible and do things in a humane way and eventually have enough impact on the industry that everyone is I don't want to say forest but um, that that's the norm in the industry and if you don't do that as part of the supply chain in the industry that you'll just go out of business because people won't do business with you so one thing I'm trying to do is change that it does happen it happens too often and if we don't change it ourselves, then we'll get regulated and be forced to change somehow. So let's change it ourselves from the inside the industry and inside the hobby. That's what I'm trying to do. And I'm sure, Cheshire, that you know this, but with bettas, um, if you can keep the water nice and clean, Keep the temperature high. The mid 80s is no problem. 85 degrees, 84 degrees would be great. And some salt in the water would be very helpful. Now, I'm, I'm sure you've tried all those things, but if, if that can be done consistently, that's what I think would give the beta the best shot. So, now again, you've been dealing with this for a year and a half. I'm sure you've heard that and tried that and done everything. So, I'm not expecting that to be life-shattering advice, but um, but hopefully it's helpful. And if not to you, maybe someone who's having a problem and uh, hasn't heard it before. The fishy mailman. Hey, good to see you. Do you ever see... Okay. Steato Jenny's Elegans on the list. I would be interested in a few if they ever become available. Let's see this one. You know, I did finally see that... Um, that jewel cichlid everybody wants, Hemichromis exul, on the list. I almost brought it in, but the price was so high. I, I just, I couldn't, I didn't think anyone would be able to buy them, like, or be willing to buy them. So what we're talking about here, Steato Jenny's Elegans. Wow, what a cool knife fish. That's pretty cool. Um, is this one... <coughs> Sorry about that. Is this one African? Or is this a South American knife? Let's see real quick. I just, I'm just curious where it's from. Fish base will tell me. Oh, the Orinoco? Okay, so this is South American. Okay. Um, I don't think I've seen that one. I don't know if I've seen that one ever um, on the list, to tell you the truth, fishy mailman, but it's cool. And I'll do a little more research. If it's one that doesn't grow too large, then I'll keep an eye out for it. Thanks for bringing it to my attention. Stay at so Jenny's Elegance. Cool little knife fish. Well, I think little. Dragon Lair, they had to get to know your speaker video on Facebook this past weekend. Yeah, I, I like that Maasai does that. They 
they're going to have a speaker come. And so a few days before they actually give the presentation, they just chat with them and you get to know them a little bit and then you get to hear the knowledge. So it's kind of like you would at a fish club meeting, right? You'd chat and get to know each other and then they do their presentation and then you'd chat more during the auction and people would yell at you to be quiet. <laughs> Scott Baker. Candy, I think Dan is only about four weeks behind tonight. Awesome. Doing pretty good then. I guess we're not going to catch up and get another another commemorative mug anytime soon. <laughs> you know, let's go ahead. There's 179 of us here. Let's go ahead and do the last giveaway here. So this is for two more pieces of art by Swiss Aquatics. That is Priscilla, our very own Priscilla. Um... For those who've missed it, this is the kind of artwork she does. I think it's amazing. There's some pieces here that I really like. And the winner of tonight's giveaway, the second winner, because we already did one, will win two pieces of art from Priscilla. And the winner is David. David Wycliffe, you have won. David Wycliffe, you have won some art from Priscilla. So. Let us know. You've got about a minute and a half to let us know that you are here. Oh, I should have shown that. Now people are going to call shenanigans that you are here because uh, you do have to be present to win. And we'll go from there. While we're waiting for David, I'm going to get to another question. <laughs> Orange cones. I can see you doing fish room tours by candlelight. Absolutely. In my tuxedo. <laughs> Lunatic Fringe. That was about 15 years ago or so. Ted, Judy, and I would talk a lot about fish from the Congo, and Mike Helwig was a speaker along with Berger. I don't know this name. Berger? Camprith? I hope I'm not butchering that. Oh, he's he's a Synodonist guy. Cool. Yep, that was a cool contest. Coolest thing TFH ever did. I, I, I loved it. Unfortunately, I just don't... Uh, yeah, there's not much TFH does that I'm that interested in. It's so... I don't know. It's kind of watered down, I guess. And the salt and fresh. And doesn't really go in depth so much on anything anymore, I guess. Is my thing with it. Now, for someone starting out in the hobby, it might be great. It, but it, it kind of tends to stick to more of that kind of basic stuff. I don't know. It just doesn't do it for me like Amazonas does. David... Cliff is here. I'm here. Thank you. All right, David. Congratulations. Um, send me an email, dan at dancefish.com. I'll get you in touch with Priscilla, and she'll send you that art. <laughs> Swamp Thing, if you get to this question with there only being 15 minutes left in chat, I'll give you $1 million. <laughs> Disclaimer, no, you won't. <laughs> well... There are 15 minutes left in chat, Swamp Thing, because now I'm going to go long just so there's 15 minutes left. <laughs> now nah, there's seven minutes left. One million dollars. Thanks, Swamp Thing. That's pretty funny. Oh, hang on. Chat jumped. Here we go. The Fishy Mailman at... Most 13 inches is what I've read for that knife fish. If you get them, I'd probably make the drive and pick them up if that's possible. Cool. Yeah. Uh, that's that's always a, an option. I, I think that's... I love it when people visit. I just need some notice. David saying he's here again. And cool. We caught up, but not really because chat jumps so much on us. So <laughs> I can't really take that win, I guess. Okay, hang on. Scrolling up again because chat jumped. Mm. See if I missed anybody. I think I didn't. Awesome, we did it. Well, I want to remind everybody that um, Punchy Paint is going next. She'll be going at uh, 9 p.m. Mountain Time, so that's in about half an hour. 
So about half an hour after we end, she'll be going. So if you want more Fish Fam talk, head on over to Punchy Paint's YouTube channel. She will be live. Um, let's go ahead and wrap it up. I'd like to thank my mods for doing what they do. Really appreciate you guys. Kelly Foreman, thanks so much for the super chat. Always appreciated. Never required, but it does make the wife super happy. And I'm glad those Sikioptris are doing well. Um, whether they're Lagocephalus or Ocellaris or something else. It's hard to tell with those gobies. So I basically, when I get gobies and stuff like that, I, I basically just trust the list that the exporter sends me unless I see an obvious difference. Uh, but with gobies, they're, a lot of these are new enough and rare enough and just don't know them very well. So with gobies, I don't have a lot to go on. So... Um, I'm grateful when you go be nerds out there reach out and say actually this is that because it helps me get things uh, better identified as I list stuff on the website um, so thanks to everyone who uh, you know chatted asked questions Priscilla thanks so much for your generous giveaway giving away your art I, I love your work I'm a fan and I appreciate you doing that everyone lurking hail the lurker nation everyone watching on the replay thanks for watching one day i hope you can be here live and with that i hope everybody that's uh, recovering from the super cold temperatures and power outages and all that i hope it goes well for you i feel for you wishing you the best until next time be careful everyone